There are a number of artifacts found at varying parts of the world, which, due to the immense age of the strata they were discovered within, fly in the face of current paradigms in regards to the chronology of man. Iron pots, zinc vases, even imprints of ancient chariot wheels, found in numerous coal seams, and found by people in positions of responsibility, whom often testify not only in regards to their legitimacy, but are often accompanied by the lump of coal in which they were found, still possessing the intriguing imprint upon their surface, undeniably supporting the testimonies of these individuals, all but proving authenticity beyond doubt. Like that of the iron pot and its accompanying coal block, which was its tomb, carbon dating has indicated that the pot is an astonishing 300 million years old. However, as time goes on and coal mining, along with many other mining activities, becomes more rapid and advanced in nature, it is simply a matter of time before even more mysterious and unexplainable artifacts are also found. Unfortunately, due to the controversial nature of these artifacts, it is very likely that a number of them have either been shrugged off or actively destroyed before ever achieving widespread acclaim. However, fortunately, the next artifact of interest, just like that of the many others we have previously covered, can not only be seen as yet another smoking gun, indicating that there has been a number of advanced phases within human civilization, but yet again, this timeline could, in all possibility, date back an astonishing 300 million years. Although modern society has been taught that we are at the height of human accomplishments, many of these techniques we currently claim as our own accomplishments could have been achieved an unimaginably long time ago, far back within Earth's history. Dated to the same age as that of a number of other artifacts, which we have covered in the past, a group of brass doorknobs were once abandoned, eventually finding their way into a coal seam, which has been dated as 300 million year old geology. Found still encased within this ancient strata, these astonishing artifacts are undeniably of an incredible age. Unfortunately, and rather predictably, not much has been done in regard to mainstream investigation into said artifacts and their current location, if indeed still in existence, is unclear. Yet fortunately, before their disappearance, photographic evidence was taken, subsequently allowing us to add it to the volume of research and artifacts which not only support our posit of lost civilization, but place human activities an impressive 300 million years back into Earth's history. Who made these brass doorknobs? Could we really be a civilization hundreds of millions of years old? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. In 1944, a 10-year-old boy by the name of Newton Anderson was playing in his basement, smashing lumps of coal with a mallet, when he made an amazing discovery. The coal that he was playing with had been mined very near to where he lived in Upshur County, West Virginia and is largely accepted to be around 300 million years old. Imagine then, Newton's, and subsequently his parents' surprise, when he presented to them this small bell, complete with strange winged figure and its possibly very ancient clapper, later found to be made of iron. Although there are many people who now insist that the dating of the coal must be incorrect, this little bell could also be a long-lost relic, lost within woodland that over the eons becomes perfectly preserved within the eventual coal seam, lost by an advanced civilization which once inhabited Earth. The bell is considered an antediluvian artifact or an object of pre-flood origins by the Institute for Creation Research, who had the bell submitted for laboratory testing at the University of Oklahoma. Whilst there, a nuclear activation analysis revealed that the bell contained an unusual mix of metals a mix of metals not uncommon to Earth but rather unusual for our current civilization to have decided to have manufactured it with, further supporting its authenticity as a very ancient relic. Later on in his life, Newton Anderson spent a great deal of time researching the figure atop the bell. He discovered similarities to the Babylonian southwest wind demon called Pazuzu. The demon typically is shown with a prominent headpiece like the bell figure. The Hindu deity, Garuda, is sometimes depicted on top of bells, 
as is the Egyptian Isis. The kneeling posture with hands clasped is also quite like Garuda representations, and because of this, some have argued that it must be an Indian Ganta bell. However, these similar and often confusing arguments over very similar deities could be seen as a consequence of cataclysm. Past civilization and the mythologies briefly retained, and all recorded at a time before such belief systems became too clouded with other outside influences. Another rare artifact is this strange handle, also found in coal and fortunately photographed before it vanished forever. Totally petrified and reportedly appeared to have virtually turned to coal. According to those who briefly investigated it, the handle appeared as well made as any modern handle. What do you think regarding these strange objects? Can coal form and objects petrify faster than we have ever witnessed? Or are these relics indeed millions of years old? Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. Lake Superior, the largest of the North American Great Lakes, it is also the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. Believed to have first been inhabited 10,000 years ago after the retreat of the last ice age. However, there exist copper mines upon many of the lake's islands, which many researchers have concluded to be prehistoric. A sophisticated array of tunnels litters the islands, or more specifically, all of North America. Scarred by ancient mine pits as deep as 150 feet, carbon-14 testing of wood remains found in sockets of copper artifacts indicated they are at least 5,700 years old although artifacts and evidence at some sites have suggested a date far older than what has been put forward. For example, some investigators believe that the mines were not even built by humans, but are the remains of a sophisticated mining operation that was once undertaken by alien visitors many thousands of years ago. Similar in scale to the ancient Carolina mica mines, mica being a material which we use in electrical components. It must be noted that all of these prehistoric mines show evidence of being abruptly abandoned. Whether this is evidence of the death of an unknown king or queen, or evidence for catastrophe is unknown. All along Lakeshore are vestiges of this once highly successful ancient operation. The most astonishing of remnants catalogued publicly has to be the enormous lump of pure copper found in 1771 near the bank of the Ontonagon River. In 1945, it was floated downriver on a raft by a James K. Paul and was eventually appropriated by an agent of the United States government. It was then shipped to Detroit and on to Washington, where it eventually slipped into the bowels of the Smithsonian. Known as the Ontonagon Boulder, it weighs 3,708 pounds. It was apparently well known to Native Americans. According to the Keweenaw Bay Indian community, the boulder was used by tribe members to make offerings to its manito, or spirit, to seek improvement in their health and well-being. Just how old is the Ontonagon boulder, or indeed, the mine from which it came? Although many would like you to believe the mines are less than 5,000 years of age, we think many factors surrounding them suggest that they are far older than that. Dorchester, Massachusetts, USA, in 1852, at Meeting House Quarry, workers were using dynamite to break up the bedrock, when an explosion threw an artifact into the light of day, after spending many thousands of years under the earth. According to geologists, the Roxbury Rock, in which this mysterious artifact was embedded, has been dated as having accumulated between 570 and 593 million years ago, during the Eddie Cannon period. Imagine their surprise, when workers spotted a metallic object amongst the debris of the explosion, still partially embedded in a chunk of rock, and now sheared into two pieces from the forces of the blast. A zinc vase covered in flower decorations painted in solid silver. The bell-shaped pot is around four and a half inches tall and about six and a half inches long, and was noted as being exquisitely made. The age of the vase has been heavily debated amongst specialists, with many struggling to produce ages smaller than 100,000 years. Additionally, the species of flowers and plants that are illustrated upon the vase also went extinct over 100,000 years ago. Not surprisingly, 
but rather predictably, the pot along with all authenticated documentation regarding its discovery, mysteriously vanished without trace shortly before a full investigation into its amazing history could take place. The initial discovery was covered on June 5, 1852, from the publication of the magazine Scientific American which confirms its authenticity, as indeed being found embedded in the solid ancient stone, 15 feet below the surface. But shortly after this coverage, like so many other amazing objects found around the world vanished without trace. Who made this amazing artifact, when was it made? If we go by the age of the rock in which it was discovered, it is amazingly over 500 million years old, but we may never know. We recently covered the astonishing discovery made deep within a coal mine under Rostov in Russia. Fortunately photographed by Mr. Kasatkin, an experienced safety engineer, who discovered the prints of what clearly appears to have been left by chariot's wheels. These seemingly impossible prints are, thankfully, not the only unexplained artifacts to have been found deep within the mines of Earth. In 1912, workers shoveling coal in the municipal electric plant in Thomas, Oklahoma, would make an equally important discovery. As they were breaking up the large lumps of coal in preparation for the furnaces, to their surprise, a small iron pot would be ejected from one of the chunks. Several experts would examine the iron pot over the following few days, all declaring it to be genuine. Apparently, the imprint of the pot could also still be clearly seen in the broken chunks of coal that had encased it for, in all possibility, millions of years. According to Robert O. Fay of the Oklahoma Geological Survey, the Wilburton Mines coal, in which the pot was found, is an incredible 312 million years old. The cup is now displayed at a private museum in southern Missouri. It was fortunately photographed by Robert Nordling, who sent a copy to Frank Lewis Marsh, Emeritus Professor of Biology at Andrews University in Berrien Springs, on 10 January 1949. He forwarded the images to Wilbert H. Rush in 1971. Rush was a professor of biology at Concordia College. This means that we now have several artifacts we know to be in existence, which, according to modern understanding as to the age of coal, are over 300 million years old. The pot? is still within a private collection of an unknown collector. During such events as a pyroclastic flow, complete human forms can often be preserved in a fixed position, turned to ash in an instant. Someone turning into a stone fossil with age, however, was thought to be an impossible scenario. That was until 1898, when an extremely controversial discovery was made deep within a copper mine. Although several reports have surfaced over the years of this most peculiar of discoveries, only one has ever managed to stay around long enough to be officially documented. Deep within an old copper mine in Chukikamata, an ancient stone woman, complete with basket and tools, was discovered. And although a date of only 400 years was preliminarily given, it is clear to the many involved that she is far older than that. The discovery was examined closely by José Torobino Medina, a central figure in Chilean archaeology at the time. He described his findings as follows. The body is that of a female. The depth of the soil where the corpse was found was no more than 6 to 8 feet, and the miner was probably searching the mountain when a sudden collapse buried her. The miner, feeling that the mountain was breaking down, lifted her arms up to protect her head the position in which her body is preserved. This discovery, although the only one of its kind, is highly controversial, and we suspect this may be because certain individuals are aware of its true antiquity. Beside the body were the remains of a basket, a stone sledgehammer, several stone shovels, sharpened pieces of wood, and a torn bag made of animal hide all leading to the conclusion that this mummy dates from a very distant time within our history. After more recent analysis was conducted, it was discovered that it was actually a man, strangely. He also has an unusually shaped skull, and a green hue from sulfate and chloride within the copper. It is thought this may have been one of the contributing factors in his marvelous preservation. The Copper Man of Chukwikamata is extremely difficult to research. 
and although he is clearly of considerable historical importance, his whereabouts may continue to remain vague. Regardless of his known whereabouts, his existence will forever lend credence to a forbidden history here on our planet. <laughs>